Well, I'm back out on the trail again after three weeks, and now I'm in the Columbia River Gorge Angels Rest Trailhead. I just started, and uh, I'm going to hike as far down the gorge going east as possible, probably 30 to 40, maybe more miles. Crested the ridge in short order. Angel's Rest is out here towards the end. Right out there. There's the Columbia River. Just a couple days ago, the winds were probably 50 to 70 miles an hour up here. Well, here we are at uh, the first campsite. Pretty nice, actually. I've always wanted to camp here and never have. There's a small creek running over here. There's some nice old growth in here. A couple nice big ones back there. Got the tent set up. Well, this is a trip that I've been wanting to take for years. Just go the length of the gorge as far as I can. It's going to be hard to figure out the logistics of how far I can go, where I can camp. The nights come early here. It's a little after 4, 4.30 now and in these thick woods it's kind of dark already. Actually it'll feel dark soon but I'll get some power rest tonight. Here it is the next morning at camp number one. Great night's sleep. I had the uh, constant din of traffic just over this lip here. It drops down into the Columbia River Gorge where there are two highways, two train track systems. It wasn't that bad though. I was able to sleep through it. I could just hear it when I woke up. Looks like I've got some sun to start out the day. It's really motivating. And I just had uh, up in here a pileated woodpecker cawing. Look, I saw it fly along here and it was just on these trees here in the sunlight. But they have just, those big birds have precision eyesight. And uh, from over here, it saw me move a little bit. He took off. This is a nice place to rest. Take stock in the system, the backpacking system. This uh, layer is going to get wet today. These overhanging limbs and leaves, they're all wet and uh, it gets a little thick in the gooseberry patches.
going down to Joaquina Creek. There's another trailhead that climbs up from the gorge, the bottom. This is the top of Joaquina Falls. This is what I would call Camp 2. It's the second camp along this uh, eastbound trail in the gorge. Just might, uh, there's a trail over there. You just might get a lot of people traffic up here in the summer. Here's where I loaded up on my drinking water. And uh, this tree here, I think it's the crying tree. There's a lot of sap. I think that's it. I remember this one tree that looked like it was just hanging on for dear life. The sap starts way up here. I'm above Multnomah Creek now. The creek's down there. I'm going to drop down to it, hook up with another trail, and go up this valley. Well, this I would call Camp 3. It's just off uh, Multnomah Creek, which I think is over here. Here's another feeder creek here we cross. This is Multnomah Basin up here. Well, I'm just reaching probably the halfway point for the day. Boy, oh boy. That was a workout to get here. It was pretty much non-stop. <laughs> Uh, Larch Mountain is up this way and heading now east into the gorge. Luckily, we're done climbing. I have a couple of little creek valleys to go down and then up. And then I think another hundred feet up at the end. We had a splash of rain. Not much at all. I put the rain jacket on for about five minutes. All these trails are pretty well maintained. It might get uh, a little thicker. Well, I'm now at Bell Creek Trail and things just got pretty rugged. There's down trees, big old growth trees that I have to climb over and uh, it's gonna be slow, I think, the rest of the way. So I'm soaking wet. Some nice big old trees here. Now let me tell you, when I get to a, a patch of trees like this, old growth, I'm pretty happy because there's not much undergrowth. I know the camera really doesn't give these guys justice, but they're 300 years, probably. And this is good news. I'm starting to look for a camp spot. This right in here is just about perfect. Like over there, there's like some shelves that you could kind of round out for a campsite. But, you know, I just, I, I just want to keep going a little bit more because there's no water here. 
I would have to go back down to that creek crossing, which, you know, it's a quarter mile. I think a third of a mile. But I'm just hoping that there I can find a little tiny, tiny drainage somewhere. Like in some big old trees like these. Well, I uh, traveled the 3.3 miles to the uh, horsetail trail. And that was a long 3.3 miles, man. And I didn't cross any water. So I'm just going to have to keep hiking until I cross some water. And I'm just hoping that there's a place to camp nearby. Well, I got set up just in the nick of time. Got a really nice place. I'm under about three or four cypress or cedar trees. It was a dry setup. My foot is in a Ziploc bag. These boots are just sodden wet and uh, I've got wet socks here, wet pants. This is all dead weight now. I've probably added a pound to the pack. I should have switched to rain gear through the Bell Creek section. This is kind of where I'm at. It's someplace in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was cool. There was an owl hooting right after I set up and just ducked in my into my tent. It was somewhere up in here, and it was so loud that it echoed. Well, I guess the motivation is gonna pick up here in a minute. It's a little brighter. If you ever wonder. What happens to those balloons that get loose in the city? There they are. I wanted to point out real quick what I'm carrying on this trip. Uh, that's pretty much everything that goes in my pack. And the tent goes in the pack. The tent is wrapped up in a big garbage bag. And here's my food. Started at 10 to 12 pounds. There's my sleeping bag, jacket. Here's my extra clothes. They stay dry. There's the stove, camera case. Uh, that's emergency stuff. Kind of utensils and things. Pots and pans, stove, fuel, my water. And here are the wet clothes. That's a real bummer. Um, they're gonna get wrapped up in the tarp. Here's the trail here. Horsetail trail, but it's right close to the edge here, and that's got to be a total of about 2,000 feet, 1,500 feet to 2,000 feet. Kind of spooky here with this fog. Here's the trail, and we're right on an edge. Yeah. Here's some rocks over here. Almost looks like there could be a cave right there. Yeah, that would be the point of no return. This just goes straight down. Cedar shakes with some plexiglass. 
This is really interesting how the door opens. This comes up and attaches up there. I did it. Okay, so that one goes up. There we go. This one slides in. That's one heavy bolt. Look at that. Smells like a cabin. Oh. Let's get a look at it. Take a walk around. Cedar shake roof here. This one is metal. Metal roof on the front porch. This is where firewood is stored. This was uh, dammed actually the last time I was here and water flowed over that lip here. It's well washed out. It was kind of nice to be able to wash your dishes. Here the corners are all supported with the talus. Nice windows here, both sides. Skylight up there. There's a skylight for the loft. That's warm. Well, here I am getting nice and cozy warm in the cabin. I have a nice fire going. I think it'll help motivation to get all dried up and also I can get up early tomorrow. It's a nice view here. Well, I'm chilling on the front porch with my dinner. It's weird. Every every minute that passes I'm almost expecting to see somebody walking through the woods. It's how it is here. You just never know. There was uh, mouse poop on the counter so it's been a while since anybody's been here. Thought I'd better check in in case I am completely lost so that there will be some diary of my going missing but this is uh, pretty rustic back here this is the trail and there's not much of it I'm coming down from Von Am Rim and I'm going down into a creek valley and I have got to say this has been one rustic trail very wet here today there's the trail going off through here kinda lost it a couple times but not really you know, it's just one thing you can't afford to lose, is this trail. It's your lifeline to getting out of here. All of the views are socked in. Well, this is how darn rustic this trail is. This is where it goes, right up this way. And I just came down, and this is what I have to follow through here. You know, lucky thing is, these trails are ancient. I mean, they're mostly covered already with grass and moss, but they've just been here for probably almost a hundred years. And luckily, I've been able to follow it. We'll see how it goes. Every, uh, every day I'll have a chance to bail out. Like if I wanted to leave, go home, I could go down this creek valley and go out to the road. Well, this has been a really, uh, it's been a real eye-opening experience because it's pretty wild back here, rustic. This is Tanner Creek. I'm going to have to cross this someplace, not there, maybe up there. And this crossing could take a half an hour. <laughs> There's the trail over there. And this is almost beyond my comfort level because this trail was just not maintained at all not that well marked not well used just down in here it was really rough 
and if you lose this trail you're pretty much screwed I would have to I would have to go back all the way back the way I came that would be the safest thing to do I guess it stopped raining it's not cold I'm all wet just a little frenetic just a little frenetic I really don't think this is gonna work out because it's taking a long time to get through this stuff that creek crossing uh, was really really dangerous that water was deep and uh, all those rocks were slippery it was not it was like at the very edge of my comfort level I had to jump from one rock to a submerged rock that sloped off into about three feet of running water and I was sliding right into it it's rough with a pack that pack is heavy and this is interesting here I see this log that uh, like hey I have a seat here and I'm sitting here obviously the trails there and I look up and there's a sign it's a Tanner cutoff trail and this is the this is the decision point right here if I should uh, go deeper into the wilderness which this trail has got to be even less maintained than those other ones really 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 rough going one mile an hour so I'm thinking I might bail out on this because I'm not able to cover the distance that I want there's just not enough time in the day to do it and this is a 2400 foot climb up to the top of this ridge and that will take two or three hours it's just after noon and I wanted to be at the top of that by one so this is just a, a whole lot more of an undertaking, especially back here in the, in the wilderness. Here I am bailing on the gorge trip. I was just up this valley, which is, might even be hard to see, but it slopes up. And uh, quite quickly I came out of that wilderness and onto this road. And I think it's going to take me up there. And eventually, two or three miles down this gated road uh, to the bottom of the gorge. So now I'm just looking for a place to camp. I'm feeling kind of bummed out that I had to do this. <laughs> Maybe I could get warm next to that. Well, I have found a place to set up. It's just this kind of a dry windy knoll and uh, the road is just past these trees comes around the corner here so we're just gonna chill here tonight might even hike down to Cascade Locks if that 400 trail goes all the way through there's a nice little waterfall here a small one there And this is the trailhead for Tanner Butte. This is the trail going up here. Climbs four and a half miles up to Dublin Lake. I think that's the name of it. That would be the first campground. And then a total of eight miles to Tanner Butte from here. Well, I guess I just might fulfill one of my plans. This is the 400 trail, the gorge trail. I'm going to be able to hike hopefully all the way to Cascade Locks and that was my goal to hike from Angel's Rest to Cascade Locks except I cut a bunch of miles out of the probably the coolest heart of that uh, wilderness back there I guess I'll have to do it another time well here I am hiking along this is uh, an old road a paved road probably a scenic byway hiking right next to the freeway sucks a little bit it was close 
Here I am right above the chaos of the freeway. There's Bridge of the Gods. That's where I'm hiking to. Table Mountain over there.